Hey everyone, so this is a screencast on the details of translation that we were talking about in class over the last couple days. I realize this is a, a complicated topic uh, and that there are a lot of pieces to it and that it seems uh, very difficult. So I've created this little sort of animation for, for you to look at on the screencast and we might look at it in class too, but a, a little animation to show you how this process actually works. First thing I need to do is to introduce you to some of the players in the cell that uh, are involved in uh, protein synthesis, so in translation. <clears throat> the first one that we talked about is the ribosome. So the ribosome, uh, there's many, many ribosomes in the cell. That's how important protein synthesis is. Uh, ribosomes consist of two subunits. So you have a large subunit here, this whole shape right here and then a small subunit here. <clears throat> so these are the actual cell structures that are going to synthesize the proteins to perform translation. Uh, a lot of times people confuse ribosomes for organelles. They're not technically membrane bound, so they're not technically organelles. They're cell structures, but they're very important cell structures. They, uh, they make proteins. <clears throat> they contain another kind of RNA, so this is important to know because there are three types of RNA that I want you to know. Uh, ribosomal RNA makes up ribosomes, so it plays a role in kind of keeping this structure together. The second type of RNA I want you to know about is this messenger RNA. You know all about messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is made during the process of transcription. Okay, so when you go from DNA to RNA, you are essentially making messenger RNA. There are a few processing steps that we talked about in class. Um, the splicing out of exon, uh, of introns, excuse me. Uh, but basically you're making messenger RNA. And that's based on the DNA code, based on the DNA sequence. Okay, so when you look at a messenger RNA strand, you'll see these codons. You know all about the codons. They're three RNA letters long. And basically that's what specifies various amino acids. Okay, the final RNA and the final player that I want you to know about for translation is this uh, transfer RNA. Okay, so your book draws it a little differently. It doesn't really matter. It's symbolic uh, as far as I care for, for what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to draw it like this. There are a couple key points about the transfer RNA. Okay, so the first thing you should be asking yourself is uh, what is it transferring? Okay, so what is transfer RNA transferring? Uh, and where is it picking them up? And where is it taking them? Well, the, what it's transferring are these amino acids. Okay, so they're transferring the actual amino acids that we're going to string together to make a protein. So, you know, they're, they're basically joined to the, uh, to the tRNA, these amino acids right here. And so the tRNAs basically carry these amino acids from the cytoplasm. And they're going to carry them to the ribosome where they um, where the amino acids will be used to create a protein. Another feature of the transfer RNA that I want to guide you to is this structure down here at the bottom of the tRNA called uh, the anticodon. Okay, so that term suggests a few things. So this anticodon right here is going to help, as you'll see in a few minutes, this tRNA dock with uh, the codons up here in the messenger RNA. Okay, so it, how does it dock? Well, it's complementary base pairing. So if your uh, codon, for example, let's take this codon right here and say that it is A, 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 uh, whatever amino acid that specifies the tRNA is going to bring to the ribosome to add to the growing subunit, and it's basically going to uh, dock with uh, a complementary anticodon, so the anticodon in this case would be U, U, U. I hope that makes sense. We're going to see it in action in a few minutes here, um, starting now actually. Okay, so what's the first step for translation? The first step is this, uh, this messenger RNA right here needs to, uh, needs to be brought to the ribosome. Okay, so you have your ribosome here, ribosome here, and this messenger RNA basically goes to the ribosome and binds with it, as you're seeing here. Uh, this is, of course, occurring in the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are found. And you can kind of see off in the distance those tRNAs. 
that are going to play a role. So the tRNA, tRNAs are also in the cytoplasm. Remember, they're bringing amino acids shown here and here to the ribosome. They will play a critical role in the second step. Okay, so looking at the second step, essentially the, the whole point of um, the whole point of translation and the whole point of tRNAs is to bring these amino acids to the ribosome so they can be joined in together to, to, to make a growing protein. Okay, so you have your messenger RNA strand here. So you see that the messenger strand is giving you the codon AUG. Okay, so the first thing that has to happen is uh, a complementary anticodon uh, needs to base pair with this codon. So you look around here, you say, oh, okay, I got four amino acids. Uh, I got four tRNAs here carrying four various amino acids. You know from class already that this AUG specifies methionine. It's going to make additional sense here when you look at the anticodon for methionine, UAC. So U, uh, AUG is perfectly complementary to UAC. So this tRNA uh, can drift over here to this site right here and complementary base pair with this codon, right? So you see it's basically a complementary base pairing with it right there. Okay, so now we have uh, a tRNA carrying methionine in this uh, site right here. What's going to happen next? Well, you need to bring in another tRNA carrying another amino acid. So the next codon in your sequence is UUG. So you need to basically look up in your codon table what UUG would bring. Uh, and you can do that using just the genetic code table. You can also do it this way by looking for a complementary anticodon. And if I look over here, I see this leucine over here has an AAC, which is perfectly complementary. So I go here, and it complementary pairs uh, with that codon. So now you have methionine and leucine uh, basically strung together. Uh, fast forward to the next slide, and what you see here, guys, is that the messenger RNA has now shifted. So remember, this used to be right here. This used to be right here. But now we've shifted the messenger RNA this way, okay? Because of that, the tRNA that was carrying methionine, the tRNA that was carrying methionine has been pushed out of the ribosome, basically. So this thing now is, uh, is gone. It's, it's been kicked out of this exit site, so it leaves. But it left behind its methionine, and it basically allowed this bond to occur where you have methionine now bond to leucine, bound to leucine, right? Now leucine is in this site. This site is now open and waiting for a tRNA to bring another amino acid to basically bond with leucine here to create this growing strand of, of amino acids, this protein. Okay, so again, you look at this codon. You can either look at your table, or you can look at the available tRNAs carrying the various amino acids that we have available to us. So you see that you have a codon C, C, G. And if you look over here, you see that, uh, you see that we have this, and I gotta grip it here. You basically have this GGC here. And I'm having a hard time grabbing it. But um, basically, this, uh, this, there we go, uh, this tRNA can come into the A site now. It will complementary base pair. You see uh, GGC goes with CCG. Now it's going to bring this proline in the proximity of this leucine. 
so that you can once again create a bond between leucine and proline here to once again lengthen this protein. Okay. Now you have to imagine basically again this messenger RNA is going to shift this way. Now this leucine will basically, uh, the tRNA carrying the leucine will leave. This guy will shift over to this site, making this site once again available. And we'll, we'll bring the tyrosine in here because you can see here that this uh, AUG is perfectly complementary to this UAC. Okay, so hopefully this, this makes a whole lot of sense. Um, let's go to the last slide and see what happens and see what has happened. Okay. So again, we started with methionine. It was bound to leucine. Leucine was bound to proline. Proline was bound to tyrosine. You can actually go through and literally see the codons that brought these amino acids. And now we've come to the end of our messenger RNA transcript. And you know what we've run into. We run into UGA. UGA is a stop codon. So if you recall from the last unit, uh, the last uh, screencast, this uh, stop codon does not specify an amino acid. What it specifies is a stop. It specifies a stop production of this protein. Okay, so you're going to see a tRNA with the complementary signal to UGA. So I have here an anti, uh, a tRNA with the anticodon ACU. And essentially what's going to happen is this is going to indicate, shown here by the stop signal, production of this protein. So here after this tyrosine, this stop codon and say in stop, you now have your protein. You are done with protein synthesis. And see all these empty uh, tRNAs? They have to go back into the cytoplasm and pick up new amino acids to once again bring back to the ribosome. So this is a continual process. They just do this um, all the time. That's their job as tRNAs. Okay, so I hope that makes a lot of sense. I hope that adds to what we talked about in class. If it doesn't make uh, sense, please come and see me for extra help, and I'd be glad to sit down and talk to you about it, okay? Uh, see you soon, guys. Bye.